How's it going everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to have another Blender tutorial talking about lighting and this time we're going to light a jewelry. As you can see here, these are the topics we are going to cover in this tutorial and we are going to talk about the diffusion material that I use for this lighting scenario and also how this diamond shader was built for this particular render and also why I use the light reflectors and lastly and how the environment affects the lighting. So without further ado, let's get started. As you can see here, these are the scenes that I built for this one here. And it's pretty straightforward. I only use one single light. And this is the diffusion material that I was talking about. And here, it's just simple plane. And the shader is apparently just a translucent VSDF, nothing fancy. If I go here to color, I just push all the way to the top. It's just a white one. So if you go to the solid mode, it's just symbol plane, nothing special. Okay, so what I've done here, I use a the default light spotlight for the inside of Blender. If you've been following my channel for a little bit while, you know I really don't use the Blender default light. It's just because the lighting quality just not that good uh, however for this particular scenario for the lighting jewelries i really want to stimulating how the real photographer do lighting when they are photographing jewelries inside a photography studio so this is what it looks like so basically the photographers are going to purchase some kind of sort of diffusion materials and just some might translucent that's why i use this shader and uh, usually it's a pure white or a little bit you know yellow-ish but it usually supposed to be like a neutral white okay and then they're just gonna light through a light in here and what's what's the the interesting part or the difficult part is how you positioning the light the light is not directly hit on the surface otherwise that's going to be an even illuminating white circle right so the tricky part is how you make the gradients or the light naturally fall off from a hot center in here if i'm turning the thing off and the hot spot here and you can see here the gradient fall off and we have talked about inverse square law in the last video uh, from the master of one light tutorial and now as you can see here here's the light and because this is seen is not really physically accurate or according to the physical size this is a humongous kind of light size because when the blender started it usually started with meters because you know the the actual rings everything is supposed to be super tiny i didn't calibrate the, the size i just keep cranking up the power until it's feeding the desired power brightness so i just kind of put it down here and you can certainly do that on it yourself and this is another reflector that I want to talk about. Basically, it's just a single plane with a principal BSDF and nothing special. I just crank the roughness all the way to one and making sure this is the colors of uh, neutral white. So what's going to happen is the light is going to hit the bounce over here and creating some reflections on, onto the, uh, the actual rain. And speaking of the rain, or the diamond materials if we go inside all the way here if i click that you will see i just simply use a glass shader nothing fancy i know i've been talking about the glass shader in my some some of my videos and i've been continue testing quite a bit there are some kind of very small differences between the the, uh, the glass shader and i always trying to find the one like physically accurate and I, the more I practice, the more I notice that as long as you really master the lighting source inside Blender using the proper lighting for each scene, so you can really get in some beautiful reflections. So the viewer will not be able to really tell that this glass or the diamond is physically accurate. And unless you really want to creating some effect with caustic and you know Blender's right now is not ready for really advanced caustic rendering you can find a couple ways you can find a couple ways to work around it but that's what we got the glass shader and what i've done here is basically change the color to all the way to white and also change the ior to the 0.418 index of refraction of diamonds so just put that number in uh, and then and the rest of these things are pretty easy you're just going to build a couple blocks and again a plane 
But one thing I really want to point it out is these to look at it relatively size compared to the diamond and the, this actual light is pretty big light. Although there's some areas that didn't get illuminated, but I can I can reduce the size. But I still want you to know that the, the soft light is creating from the relative size in here. If you're really struggling understanding how light works, I will highly recommend you to watch in my previous videos talking about how to master one single light. And basically for this scene, we're just using a single one. The third topic where I talk about the light reflectors. And everything put in here looks pretty easy. You know, just one light, one reflectors. But I, there's, I spent quite a bit of time to kind of positioning the reflectors in a certain way and the lighting in the certain position. Let's just talk about the position of reflectors. It's like this, and if I move the reflector around, uh, watch what's happening on the left hand side and you will see the reflections on diamond ring is going to be changed. So that's something that you need to pay attention because we're working in the very ideal environment. Everything is super, can be super reflective and smooth. You know, if I'm selecting this, the ring, so basically it's just super metallic and the roughness is going to be the 0.1 really simple and really reflective and that's why you need to really making sure what's going to reflect on the top the other side of this one and you can see here the the light is not directly point to the diffusion material directly as it, because you can see here the light is have a, a kind of natural gradient fall off. the if I turn off this the hot spot around here for the light but you can see here that it's naturally creating a, a, a light of intensity fall off and getting a, a gradient on here this is why the reflections on the ring here is really beautiful down here it's not a really a harsh light well you can you can decide what kind of look you want but uh, the majority of the time you really don't want having like harsh light in here uh, otherwise if you're the actual photographers working in the studio shooting this you know there's a lot of time people will spend the time to getting that gradient and also use Photoshop to creating that effect as well okay so now these are pretty simple right just one light and the one reflectors and the one ring so that's what we're gonna cover the last thing I want to talk about is the environment effect of lighting a lot as you can see here and right now it's kind of like dark moody environment and I have already completely disconnected the, the world shaders and which means if I don't have this light turned on everything's going to be supposed to be pure dark watch okay right so this is what's happening so there's no any other background light in here so what I mean here uh, I have a white reflector down here if I turn this thing on you will notice the entire scene is going to look much brighter and you can see more details in the in the actual ring over here so what I've done here, I basically just put a plane atop of the scene, just barely touch that the, the square that I created, and I can still using the similar lighting and I already built to get uh, getting another render out to kind of getting some details for the the actual ring, the figures. If I disable this in the scene, you wouldn't see too much because it's reflecting to the actual blue surround environment and really giving that dark tone. For images or for final renders, a lot of times the actual photographer going to expose a couple of different images and merge them together into one single image in Photoshop. I know that is just a beautiful lie, isn't it? Because a lot of times when people think, oh, the dynamic range and how could you getting everything beautifully done with the lighting with everything you can do that but there's certain limit you you have to conquer so with this one what what I would done here for this image I can render a image just like this and then turn this thing on and then render a one more image as a second render and the last thing I want to do I'm just going to kind of getting everything close up and then just render a a layer mask so using workbench so I'm going to just render one thing out can be used as a layer mask in for inside of Photoshop and let's go back to the cycle and uh, turn everything on so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to share in this video and hopefully this is not super complicated for you and if you really 
like this type of content, please consider subscribe and hit likes and uh, also comment below to let me know what kind of topic you want. And a huge thank you for the 5K subscriber. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.